welcome to Distracted by Diamonds. On today's episode, I am going to walk you through how I mounted and hung my completed drills and chills diamond painting. Since it's going to be displayed in a way that's not under any kind of glass, I really had no other choice but to seal the painting completely. Probably would have done it anyway. I always feel like more is better. I still haven't removed the excess trim off of here. So I think I'll just go ahead and trim the excess off first before we talk about the next one. first time I have ever done that and I just want to note here your placement of these drills around these edges is everything I know that may seem obvious but I can tell you that I've seen paintings where people are you know having all the wonky drills on the very edges and when I mean the very edge I mean the outside layer <laughs> And I think to myself, man, you're going to have a hard time trimming that excess off of there. But anyway, that's the goal, right? You want to cut the canvas as close to the drills as you possibly can. And I suggest using a fine pair of scissors for that. These scissors, they're like 10 bucks. And this is the type of scissor I would use to remove my excess trim. Just saying. The next step I have figured out is I have got to get rid of this white edge that's going to be showing. I was going to use a Sharpie and do it in black, but there is no black around the edge of this painting. It's all blue, so I might as well keep with that theme. So I'm just going to take one of my Copics, which I never use for anything, so I might as well get some use out of it anyway. Okay, so that's done. And here you have it. Now, if I really wanted to be anal, I would um, probably go around and seal the edge of the canvas yet again to keep it from fraying. But I already had to wait an entire day to let this dry. And time is running short for me. I want to have this hanging up and displayed for my Drills and Chills finale. All right, kids. So what we have here is just a uh, plain old piece of MDF that I got at Home Depot. So if you're interested in mounting a diamond painting this way, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is head straight for a wall in Home Depot that looks like this. MDF was not my first choice. I really wanted to mount this on a piece of thin wood, but all of the pieces of wood that were there were warped. I don't want a piece of warped wood to mount my diamond painting on. The first thing that I had to do was get it cut. Uh, so when you go to have this cut, absolutely measure it in centimeters. Don't try to convert it into inches. You're not going to get a good result if you do that, number one. And number two, I strongly recommend that if you don't have one of these little um, centimeter tape measures, that you get one. AliExpress all day a dollar, if that. I have like four or five of them. I carry one in my purse at all times. You're gonna wanna take a centimeter ruler, the one that you measured your painting with, so that they can cut it to your specifications. I went ahead and I took some spray paint, just regular old spray paint that I had, just happened to have the right color because I wanted it to obviously be the color that surrounds the painting, right? Like the outer edges of the painting. This is just gloss finish. It doesn't have to be gloss finish. I don't recommend that you use chalk finish, but, or metallic or anything like that. But I think any kind of regular old, you know, spray paint other than that would be fine. Then what I ended up finding was when I went around the edges of the painting because it was so windy outside, I couldn't get a nice layer around the outer edge and I don't want this color to show through. I wanted it to be the aqua, much like why I went around it with the Copic marker. So 
I basically came inside. I got frustrated because I couldn't get it to stick because it was so windy. And I came inside and I happened to have some acrylic paint like this, this same color. I don't, I can't find the color. I don't know what I did with it, but um, it was just, you know, one of these deals. And it was just this color. And I just took it with a foam brush and just dabbed it really lightly around the edges um, to get it nice and um, a nice coating on there. The very last step that I had to go through in prepping this board, you have got to put a sealer on it because that is what is going to make this board non-porous and that is what's going to give you adhesion. So we've spray painted, we've gone around the edges with our paint, we have sealed it. I used two coats of polycrylic. So we're at this stage in the game. I'm going to bring my diamond painting back in here. We're going to see how good of a job I did <laughs> with my measurements. As you can see, it turned out pretty well. It is mounted on top of the board right now or sitting on top of the board. It's not mounted yet. And it's not perfect. And I had a feeling that it wasn't going to be perfect. Again, I feel like I probably could have gotten um, a much closer result had I cut the edges off flipped it over and measured the white on the back of the canvas. And that's what I will do the next time. I don't think it turned out bad. It actually turned out better than I thought. I am, however, glad that I took the time to paint around the edges of the MDF because it's definitely not spot on, but it's pretty, pretty close. Uh, I have it pretty much placed where I want it. And now I'm going to uh, forge ahead and apply this canvas to this board. Now, I wanted to do this for a while, but there was one thing missing. I wasn't sure, couldn't figure out what I was going to use to actually adhere the canvas to the MDF. And I finally have narrowed it down and come up with um, Krylon High Strength Spray Adhesive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do one side and then the other side. All right, here goes nothing. Never done this before. And, um, ooh, look at that. It comes out like a web. All right. I don't know. But we're going to learn together. All right, it's all an experiment. It's all fun and games until someone puts an eye out. But I'll tell you what, I'm digging this adhesive because it's like a spider web kind of coming out, which is nice because it's not getting all over everything. Pippi, I'm sorry guys. Nothing I can do about that at this second. Pippi, you're lucky. I can't beat you right now. We're gonna hurry up and roll this. I know you guys have this problem because I have this problem with almost every canvas that I have completed. I get the waves that go down the sides and no matter what I do, those um, wavy portions where the canvas is rolled up in the box do not want to go away. They're very, very stubborn, and I had that same problem right here. So I'm going to have to pay special attention to get those waves along this edge of the painting to lay down. I love this adhesive, and I will show you a picture of it right here. And I don't even see a problem with using it indoors because it did not, it doesn't spray out like an aerosol kind of a spray. It's more like a, like I said, more like a spider web type of a deal. I, of course, I'm gonna leave this sit for at least an hour or two and let that adhesive do its thing. I decided that I was gonna use command strips to hang this puppy. I'm not gonna walk you through the procedure of how to use command strips the directions are very clearly stated on the back of the box. If you are going to use MDF or wood that's unfinished or anything like that with these command strips, 
I highly suggest that you at least use some sealant. Again, I'm using this polycrylic, which I love, at least in the spots where you're going to be applying the command strips. Now, I don't think that command strips will just stick to MDF. You're gonna have to seal it with something first. So that is what I've done. I'm gonna follow the directions on the command strips and I'm going to stick them in the corners. I'm gonna use uh, four different sets because this is pretty heavy uh, in all of the corners and I'm going to hang it and that's what you guys will be seeing in the finale video of drills and shills. So um, if you have any questions about command strips or anything that I've done, please feel free to leave me a comment or go over on Instagram at Distracted by Diamonds and get a hold of me there. You can always direct message me. Uh, I'll be happy to answer you there. I mean, I'm thrilled with the way it turned out. The only thing I would recommend is that before you get your wood cut, you seal your painting, trim the excess off, flip it over to the white canvas side, and then do your measuring there, then get your MDF cut. That is where I messed up because I do have MDF showing a little bit. Again, though, I, that's why I'm glad I took the time to go ahead and paint it so that it, it's not really poppingly glaring. And I don't think anyone's gonna notice, to be honest. It's gonna stand the test of time, if you ask me. Thank you for joining me today. Again, if you have any questions, any concerns, anything at all, please feel free to get hold of me. I apologize again for this being so jumbled up, but I'm kind of in a hurry. want to get this done before I actually hang it, before the Drills and Chills finale, which I have to film next. Remember, truth without tact is cruelty, and uh, I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye!